Right, time for some Muslim quotes. Have you learnt all your Muslim quotes, Professor Rosa? No, you haven't. You're so lazy. You really want the biscuit, though, don't you? Yeah. Uh, gentle. Good girl. Off you go. Right, okay. Shop. Oh, I didn't do boxes around these ones. Hang on. Right, so the most important quote I'd say through the whole thing is say, He is Allah who is one. Say, He is Allah who is one. Say, He is Allah who is one. Why is this quote so important? Well, you can sort of drop it in everywhere. If you talk about Allah in any sense, just pop, say, he is Allah, who is one, into your answer. You can drop it into any question about the nature of God. I would recommend dropping it into any reason why people pray, because we pray to one God. We don't have any other gods we can pray to, so say, he is Allah, who is one. Anything about why we do something in Islam, we can bop down, ah, this is it, because there's just one God, so we must worship him. Say, he is Allah, who is one. Now, if there's another question you need, where a fact about God, he, is, he neither begets nor is he begotten, meaning he was not created nor does he create. He does not have any children of his own, nor was he created by anyone else, showing why he is all-powerful. This is proof of God's omnipotence, okay? Less flexible, that quote. Say, he is Allah, who is one, it's probably more flexible. But any reason why we obey God, those are your two quotes to show why he's so powerful. Now, we need a quote about angels, okay? Who made the angels having wings two or three or four? Any question about angels, drop in that quote. Who made, who made the angels having wings of two or three or four? Who made the angels having wings of two or three or four? Now, what if it's a question about uh, prophets, but it's a 12 mark question? Well, you do angels as your counter argument, say, oh, another important thing is angels. Some Muslims feel that angels are important. Uh, the reason is this, they're uh, created by Allah with uh, who made them? Who made the angels having wings of two or three or four? This is how the angels are able to deliver our message. We can look at this as an argument against the importance of prophets or against the importance of the holy book. Or maybe angels are more important. Allah made them with wings of two or three or four. Who made the angels having wings of two or three or four? Right. Let's think about some quotes. If we've got a question about the afterlife, we could be really inflexible, well, not really inflexible, really cheeky, and drop the angels quote in when we're talking about like either the angel Azrael, who uh, was uh, the angel of death, who is the angel of death, not was, or, or Ishrafil, who blows the trumpet to suggest the end of the world. We could say, uh, and Allah created those angels to for Akira. Uh, for example, Ishrafil blow the trumpet, uh, and he made the angels having wings of two or three or four. How does Azrael get to earth? Well, he has wings of two or three or four, so this is how we know Azrael can get to earth. If we want another quote about Akira, every soul shall taste death. Every soul shall taste death. Now, I've got another quote for predestination later, but you could drop that one in for predestination as well. Every soul shall taste death. Allah has a plan for all of us, and eventually that plan ends with us all dying. Every soul shall taste death. What is going to happen when Ishrafil plays his trumpet? Every soul shall taste death. Okay, Whenever the world ends, every soul shall take death. So any question about Akira, Judgment Day, if you can manipulate a question about uh, the angel Ishrafil, every soul shall taste death. A question with the angel Azrael, every soul shall taste death. A question about predestination, every soul shall taste death. You can just about manipulate this quote into a few places and it makes it really useful and it's nice and short. How many souls are going to taste death? Every soul is going to taste death. Every soul shall taste death. Now, if we want one about why we need to follow the rules or about hell, beware the fire made for the disbelievers. Now, yes, that's useful for an Akira question, okay? Dropping an Akira question, beware the fire made for the disbelievers. But let's think about the practices section, Shahada. Why should we think the Shahada is important? Well, if we don't believe in Shahada, beware the fire made for the disbelievers. The fire made for the disbelievers is obviously hell, Jahannam. But we need to also realise that we have to believe in God to be there. So we need to believe in Shahada. Why should I pray every day? Why should I do Salah? Well, we do not want to think that we are disbelievers believers because we have to beware the fire made for disbelievers let's manipulate this quote and drop it in so if there's any reason why we should have to believe in god we must remember to beware the fire made for the disbelievers why is the shahada so important the shahada shows that we have faith in allah and if we do not have faith in allah we must beware the fire made for the disbelievers 
Okay, now this is a proper quote for predestination. Oh, not quite in the right place. Nor can a soul die except by Allah's leave, the term being fixed by writing. Nor can a soul die except by Allah's leave, except by a term... Uh, uh, nor can a soul die except by Allah's leave, the term being fixed by writing. So, this quote is saying, no one dies without Allah's permission, okay? No one dies without Allah's permission, we knew that already, every soul shall taste death. However, the term being fixed by writing. What this means, it's very important to Sunni Muslims, your life's length is written out in advance. Don't forget, Sunni Muslims literally believe Allah has written out your life's plan in advance, okay? So your life is planned out in advance, predestination, predestination. So this quote, you can say, nor can any soul die except by Allah's leave, the term being fixed by writing. If you can't remember all of it, just go for the term being fixed by writing, showing that the length of our life is fixed by Allah. So how would we use that in a sentence? Oh, uh, predestination shows that Allah has chosen when we all die, quotation marks, the term being fixed by writing, as in it's already written down. The term is how long it is, okay? So this term has been four weeks. The term of your life is fixed by writing, the writing of Allah. Obey Allah and the Messenger. Obey Allah and the Messenger. Nice, simple one about the role of Prophet, but obey Allah and the Messenger. This quote shows us that we need to obey God, okay? It does go on to a, a sort of slightly longer piece, but the most important bit is that we obey Allah and the Messenger, okay? We obey Allah and the Messenger. What is, how would we use this? Well, uh, any sort of uh, any sort of thing about jihad, you could use it about the greater jihad. We have to obey Allah and the Messenger. Anything about the role of prophets, we could obey Allah and the Messenger because we're talking about the Messenger as well. Any twelve mark question where you're arguing that prophets are important, we have to obey Allah and the Messenger. This is a relatively uh, useful one. It can be used. The longer quote says that uh, that you may obtain mercy. Obey Allah and the Messenger that you may obtain mercy. So you could use that for an afterlife question. Okay, I think we've got enough for the afterlife. But if you can remember that, obey Allah and the Messenger that you may obtain mercy. That you may obtain mercy. If you want to quote about the Quran, this is the shortest one that I think is useful. It is nothing but a revelation revealed. Obviously, the spelling is a bit more tricky on revelation and revealed, but revelation is a truth that has been revealed, okay? It is nothing but a revelation revealed. Who revealed the truth? Well, Allah, through the angel Jibreel, revealed the truth to the prophet Muhammad. It is nothing but a revelation revealed. In fact, the full quote goes, it is nothing but a revelation revealed by one great in strength, meaning Allah. Okay, it's nothing but a revelation revealed by one great in strength, but the Quran is nothing but a revelation revealed. It is a truth revealed. Any question about the Quran? Harder to manipulate that one into other places, but obviously if you're going to talk about the Quran in another answer, you can drop in. It is nothing but a revelation revealed. Now, the Shahada is so useful. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So in the practices section on the 12 mark question, if you've got to argue something is important, well, it's always useful to argue the Shahada is actually more important. So the 12 mark question is going to quite possibly be naming why one of the five pillars is very important. So you're going to go, ah, more important than this than one of the five pillars is Shahada. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. How else can we manipulate this? Well, we can talk about Sunni and Shia with it because, and Ali is the friend of Allah. So we've got the Sunni version here, which is, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And then we have the Shia version here, which adds on, it's the whole thing. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and Ali is the friend of Allah. Now, let's say you can't remember the whole thing, but you need a Shia bit. And Ali is the friend of Allah is a nice bit to show you understand Shia Islam. You've understood the whole concept. Ali is the friend of Allah. That's the most important idea in Shia Islam that separates it from Sunni Islam. Obviously, the most important bit for both of them is there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So if you wanted to argue that Sunni and Shia had more in common than they had apart, you could use the Shahada. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. The most important aspects of the religion are the same. However, you want to show why they're different. Well... Shia Muslims change the Shahada, the fundamental beliefs, and add, and Ali is the friend of Allah. In doing this, they are showing that there is a fundamental difference between them. So you can argue this brings them together and this pulls them apart. Nice 12 mark answer to explain the differences. Yes, then put in the, like uh, Shias pray three times a day, Sunni pray five times a day. But this is a nice idea to sort of do as your main bulk. The Shahada, how it's different, is hugely important, and the belief in Ali. I'm going to do a box around it because I do a box around all of them. but know that I regret it.
Whoop. Okay, we're going to have one video on Muslim quotes, so this is all of them coming in. If people knew the reward there is in the Isha prayer and the Fajr prayer, they would come even if they had to crawl. Now, that is going to be hard for you to learn for the exam. So what I would focus on is this part here. They would come even if they had to crawl. They would come even if they had to crawl. What does this quote mean? Well, if you realised how important it was to pray to Allah, you would turn up at prayers at the mosque even if you had to crawl there. They would come even if they had to crawl. So you cannot ignore your prayers. I know it's talking about specifically about the Isha and the Fajr prayers, but you can use this. They would come even if they had to crawl. It's a fragment of a quote to suggest, oh, we can see how important prayers are because we are told that we should come even if we had to crawl. We should come even if we had to crawl. We should turn up to these prayers. Therefore, prayers must be so important because otherwise it would be something that is not uh, such a duty. It is saying that it's more optional. No, they would come even if they had to crawl. This is your easiest quote for about uh, psalm, about fasting, or about zakah because you can manipulate it into a fasting quote those who eat while their brothers go hungry is not one of us those who eat while their brother goes hungry is not one of us how can you use it in a fasting quote because it's really about charity well what is the purpose of fasting the purpose of fasting in some ways is to understand those who do not have enough food how do we understand them well those who eat while their brother goes hungry is not one of us this shows us that we should have empathy for how those people feel while we are fasting and we should understand what this quote means during ramadan during psalm well when we perform psalm because we are understanding that those who eat while the brother goes hungry is not one of us because we are eating and people are, we are not eating and people are other people are eating so we're not eating together i don't think i've explained that very well so during ramadan those who eat while the brother goes hungry well no one's eating we're united in the not eating so therefore those who eat while the brother goes hungry is not one of us everyone is united in this however there is a, another uh, fasting quote because that's easier for zakat honestly but another fasting quote those who believe fasting is prescribed to you like medicine fasting is prescribed to you. Oh, I just drew on the table. Whoopsie. Let's pretend we didn't do this because I'll be in trouble. Right? We're going to deny that blue mark later when we get in trouble. Those who believe fasting is prescribed to you. Those who believe fasting is prescribed to you. This is that, like a prescription of medicine, that you, those who believe, so Muslims, fasting is prescribed to you. You are told to do this. You must take on fasting. It is good for you. Like medicine is good for you, fasting is good for you. It helps you understand Allah, it helps you understand those who suffer, those who believe fasting is prescribed to you. Now this is about Hajj. Hajj has got a series of quotes, but they were very long. But this is the, it's a fragment, but it's a shorter one. They will come to you walking or riding on various exhausted animals. We should turn up to Hajj even if we must ride an exhausted animal, okay? Even if we have to turn up on various exhausted animals. It's a hard one to do quotes for, Hajj, because they are so long, and I haven't got any that I think you would learn in one day. Um, you know, the other ones are more difficult, but you could go obey Allah and the Messenger, and that you are told to go to Hajj, so you must do this. That would be a useful one in that case. But they will come to you walking or riding on various exhausted animals. Okay? It's the best one I can do for Hajj, in my opinion, but you know, if you can find a better one, go for it. But we've only got a day till the exam, so I won't go searching too hard. And then our final one, Allah does not love the aggressor. Allah does not love the aggressor. Allah does not love the aggressor. Now, this quote obviously is very simple in that it means uh, Allah does not love those who start the fight. Where would you use this? Well, you're going to use it on any question about the lesser jihad. The lesser jihad is obviously a Muslim's duty to uh, defend the religion, but don't forget it's defend the religion, not attack others, because Allah does not love the aggressor. You can't be the one who starts the fight. Okay, and finally, uh, a nice quote from the, uh, the banks of the Mr. Minton world. Um, the exam is tomorrow I hope you are ready I am not All right okay hang on a minute This rabbit would like to say hello, wouldn't you? All right, this rabbit's ready for the exam. So if this rabbit's ready for the exam, you should be ready for the exam.